It's the 11th hour at Subsea 2020 and I'm here with Neil Gordon, the Chief Executive of Subsea UK. Congratulations, another fantastic event under your belt. How are you feeling at the moment? Apart from feeling tired, I'm relieved. We've had a fantastic few days. It's been really good. Uh, I'm not sure of the full numbers we've had through yet, but quite a, a number of thousands from around the UK and around the world as well. Started off on, on Tuesday and uh, the, the theme for this year has been new per, uh, perspectives, which is about what is it going to look like ahead for the, the subsea sector? And that really did feature on things like the energy transition, climate change, net zero emissions. And some of the conversations we had in the plenary sessions were fantastic. We had uh, organisations such as the Offshore Renewable Energy Catapult. We had the Hydrogen Society or Association, um, the defence sector. We looked at all different parts of that, how we can look at the underwater sector. So this is our 15th year we've been running Subsea Expo now. And um, it's organised by ourselves as a trade body now with, with 300 members. And part of our ambition is really to try and grow that capability that we've got in the UK. And this is you know, renowned as one of the best sort of showcases for that technology. And companies love coming to Aberdeen. In this new venue as well, PNG Live's been so good. Um, much more space. Uh, we've got loads of breakout areas. And I was saying when we had the international reception in the even, evening the other night, there were about 350 delegates, many of them from around the world. I said, you could be anywhere in the world looking out blue skies. I said, but it's about 30 degrees colder outside here in Aberdeen than it perhaps is where you've come from. So it did bring out a bit of a laugh. <laughs> so there's been lots of things going on. The conference sessions have been pretty full most of the week. I've just finished chairing the last one there about some uh, short presentations, the soapbox and the subsea soapbox, which has been quite good fun. And there's been about 180 students with the Alpito Energize Your Future today. So that's been great to bring in some of the younger generation to just look at some of the fantastic technology that we've got here. And I think the, the key thing about the underwater sectors is it is very diverse. It grew up in the oil and gas sector, but over the past number of years, we've seen so much coming through in offshore wind, and there's been a massive growth in the offshore wind for the subsea sector because it's the same type of companies that go out and survey the seabed, that lay the cables, that lay the pipelines and monitor and construct all these things as well. So there's much more integration of some of these supply chains. So it's been a really good week so far. I would agree. The feedback that we've been getting from interviews across the event has been absolutely sterling. I think everyone's loving what you've done this year, particularly. Um, I agree with you that sort of new ideas or new thoughts on old topics definitely seems to be a key um, thought process and strategy for many of the companies going forward. Huge amounts of creativity around and optimism is just incredible. Do you agree that that's the sort of market state at the moment? The market state. We've had um, recently we published our business activity report which indicated that uh, SMEs, the smaller companies, have seen some growth. Renewables have seen quite significant growth. The larger offshore oil and gas pro projects internationally are a bit slower, but they are starting to come through. But uh, through uh, some of the, the forecasts from our analysts, Wood McKenzie on Tuesday highlighted that that is starting to come through. So that's strong optimism from that. We also ran a session on uh, Tuesday afternoon with the Oil and Gas Authority around marginal fields, looking at how the subsea uh, sector is really one of the big enablers how to tie back these small marginal fields because it's more about developing tiebacks from subsea trees into existing facilities rather than building big new facilities and that's what we're really good at so we are really experts and have built into the North Sea and that expertise has been exported around the world. Yeah, I, I think you know Aberdeen has a lot to be proud of in that field and it's probably something we don't talk about enough. Um, Tell me a little bit more about Subsea UK's connection to Subsea Expo, why you, why you did this and why it's important to the industry. Part of our strategy as an organisation, we were formed in 2004 with support from both the Scottish Government and UK Government to have an organisation that represented the subsea sector. And our main sort of pillars is really to grow the industry. And we do that through things like research and development technology, skills and education, um, diversification into different sectors or cross sectors and exporting. And that's what we're really about. And part of that was to, to build this expo, this event. So this event is organised by yourselves we're a small team um, but the whole event is organized coordinated and we're very proud of that so it's an industry event organized by industry for industry and when we speak to our members they think this is probably one of the best events that they come to to get this, the best value we have a, a huge amount of pride and our members own us as an organization and we do this on their behalf 
I think you have a lot to be proud of there and you know you're 15 years in now what do you think you know you're you're improving year on year what do you think the next few years might hold for Subsea Expo? Well Subsea Expo and for the sector that was some of the things we talked about earlier on this week the the next 15 years are different new perspectives mean it's not the same route ahead as we've seen in the past we've come through a very difficult period a downturn although it's emerging to to look more let's say on the upside the the, the out the outlook in, in the future is slightly different we have many different routes things that are coming into play such as carbon capture the hydrogen economy um, offshore wind wave and tidal so all those things are now presenting opportunities how we decarbonize the industry but also how we enable the energy transition because the subsea technologies if you think about CCUS for example it's about putting things back where they come from perhaps basically it could be capturing the carbon uh, the carbon dioxide and putting them back into reservoirs so that needs pipelines that needs the Christmas tree type uh, technology to put them back in there so a lot of the technology that's been developed in the oil and gas extraction will be used to put some of it back and also to produce things like hydrogen and various other aspects of that as well. So it is a, a very exciting place. And some of the things that we've seen quite a lot this week is about um, uh, underwater autonomy, robotics. That's really coming to the fore now. Mm -hmm. How we take less, let's say, risk, but removing the footprint in the offshore environment, perhaps of some of the larger vessels by operating um, remotely oper operated vehicles from mission control centers. And that's happening in Aberdeen. How we get our pilots to fly these drone ROVs from Aberdeen, as opposed to having to be on, on the installation or on the actual ship. So there's some fascinating technology, which is really going to make a difference in the coming years as well. So the next 15 years for, for Subsea UK and Subsea Expo is we've been talking about uh, what the next 15 years needs to get after this massive blue economy, what we've been talking about as well. The blue economy being not just the subsea part that we're familiar with, oil and gas and offshore wind, but all those other sectors. That is set to grow to about 140 billion, that's 140 billion by 2035. Now that's a massive prize. And the UK is a, a world leader in that we grab about a third of that market share globally currently. But we want to make sure that we're set up to get after that global market share in the future. We export about 40% of what we produce currently in the UK. And we want to make sure that 140 billion as it grows, that we can retain a very large share of that. So part of what we're doing is speaking to Scottish government, UK government, how we can create the next generation of something that's fit to keep on growing the subsea sector in the UK. Well, thank you very much for sharing that vision and your projected roadmap to this energy transition journey that we're all about to embark on. And I really appreciate your time. Congratulations on another excellent event and we look forward to seeing what you have for us next year. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Neil.